Sometimes it's not very convenient to start from the very beginning, from the individual atoms and the salts to build up the MO diagram of a larger molecule. So we can do what's called the fragment orbital approach. So you break down your molecule into co its component parts, find the molecular orbital diagrams of the individual fragments, and then interact those fragments um, by just picturing what the molecular orbitals look like. So let's do kind of an easy example. If we think about uh, the triangular H3 molecule, we've done this before, if you recall, um, where we take the individual H atoms, we find the salts, and we get the uh, A1 prime plus E prime representations, and we kind of generate our bonding type bonding combinations. But a different way, rather than starting from three individual H atoms, will be to consider this as a dihydrogen atom, and then we interact that with a third hydrogen atom. So the hydrogen atom, or the dihydrogen molecule rather, when you think about having two H atoms, so Right, these are both just the 1s orbitals. So easy peasy from gen chem, right? We should form our bonding anti bonding combinations. They're not split evenly, but we won't go into that. And then so this one, if you remember, is looks like this. And this one looks like this. So these are our two orbitals, and then we fill in with electrons if you want to so to form the bonding. So this was our sigma g, and then this was sigma u. OK. Where's my eraser? Ah, yes. OK. So now that we have our MO diagram for hydrogen, so I'll just kind of put our two orbitals here. So this is H2. And then now I want to think about the energy of a hydrogen atom which is going to be identical to the energies of these hydrogen atoms. So over here, think of this cute little hydrogen atom approaching. So we have our dihydrogen. They're already friends. And then we have the lonely hydrogen atom approaching along this vector. So again, so we don't have a sock, right? This is just an s orbital. So here's our 1s orbital. And so it's coming along, do, 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 and it sees these molecular orbitals. So this bonding, anti-bonding combination. So one thing is, we know that this sigma u cannot interact with this 1s because this orbital is coming right down that nodal plane. This has a nodal plane, which I will draw right here, right? Let me do it in pink so you can see it. Right? This sigma u, there's a nodal plane here. Because there's a nodal plane, as we approach down the nodal plane, the hydrogen atom is always in between on the nodal plane, so there's no interaction. This is going to be non-bonding. So we had to have an orbital here. This is non-bonding, technically. Um, and then, but we see here, if you have this orbital coming to here, we can form bonding antibody combinations. This is now of the right symmetry. So we could form a stabilizing orbital here. So this will look like, and then we have our H atom over here, right? These are all in phase. I haven't yet gone to equilateral. So let, let's say we're at some sort of iso isosceles triangle, right, where this is further away. So this goes down. And then this is, then we have to form the anti-bonding combination. So this is going to look like, do this in pink. So it's going to be destabilized from the hydrogen atom, like so. So this is, this will have to look like our out of phase combination, which will be, Right? So again, we're forming linear combinations of our orbitals. So we have bonding, anti-bonding, and like so. So here is our isosceles triangle. And then I'll point out that if we were, OK, and then this non-bonding orbital, keep in mind, looks like this, right, dot here. So if we were to then actually make an equilateral triangle where these are the same, so let's go to equilateral. Basically, as this hydrogen atom comes closer and closer, this overlap gets, gets bigger. So this bonding orbital becomes more stabilized. This anti-bonding orbital becomes more destabilized, right? So this goes down, this goes up, until we finally get to this one, where they become this anti-bonding orbital becomes degenerate with this 
uh, originally this kind of sigma u derived orbital. So this is going to look like a degenerate set, right? This is the plane, but then we also have this one, right? This is an E symmetry. This is our E prime from our D3H molecule. And then this one is stabilized, so then now, now we have our all in phase equilateral A1 prime. So this gives us the identical MO diagram that we got from just using three individual H atoms. We just did it by interacting two more simple fragments together to get to our final MO diagram. And then we can fill in with electrons as, uh, as we usually do. But let's do a second example that is a bit more complicated. Let me quickly erase. Our second example is ethane. So ethane looks like so. Let's just do the eclipsed configuration. So rather than doing this as like six, or sorry, um, how many? Eight different atoms altogether. What we could do is split it up into two methyl fragments. So let's think about what the methyl, methyl fragment looks like. So here's our kind of CH3, CH3 dot. This is going to have a really similar MO diagram to what we've done before for ammonia. So I won't go through it, but suffice it to say, our final ordering of our orbitals is going to be A1. Remember, this is a C3B fragment. So C. H and we have our radical. So this is overall seven electrons. <clears throat> so we have our A1, then we have our E, and then we have our third A1, and then we have our A1 star. This one, remember, was kind of like the pseudo non, like kind of bonding, kind of antibonding, so we're sort of non bonding. And then we have our E star. Um, and then so uh, remember that this is going to be, this A1 was kind of our all in phase, oops, this guy, this E was our bonding, like so, plus the other one. And then this A1 was that mixed orbital, which looks like this. Oops. And then these are the antibodying combinations, which I won't bother to draw. OK. So if we fill in electrons, um, again, seven electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now, what we want to do is we want to interact this with a second uh, methyl fragment. Um, this is going to get in the way, so I'm just going to quickly erase this. But keep in, remember, this is the ethane molecule. Don't forget. So a second methyl fragment is going to look identical to what we just drew. So what we can do is, again, we have our E star, our A1 star, da da da. So this is our other methyl fragment. And again, keep in mind that th this is going to look exactly the same. So the point is that these molecular orbitals can then, with the ones that are of the same symmetry to match, can form bonding antibonding combinations. So for example, this is all in phase. We can form bonding antibonding combinations of this. Uh, what, if we draw this other one, anyway, I won't draw the rest of the methyl or the rest of the hydrogens, but you get the idea. Those are they are there. Right, we have this, and then we have our A1s. So again, the, these can form bonding antibody combinations, and as can these. Uh, and remember, we still have our electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's, let's interact our orbitals. So here, these can form bonding antibody combinations. 
Here are E orbitals. They can also form body antibody combinations. There might be crossover. I'm not going to draw it here. Uh, do, 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 do. Where do I want to do this? Okay. Maybe here. These again are degenerate because we have just pi, pi bonding from these orbitals going this way and orbitals going this way. And then we have a very strong sigma bond. So this is going to be crossover because this interaction of these two lobes is really, really strong. There's good overlap, so this will be stabilized and then destabilized. And then I won't bother to interact these. They also interact, but they're all empty. So now we can fill in with electrons. So we have 14 electrons total. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So these are our final MO diagrams. So what you can see is that if we count the number of bonding antibonding combinations, so here this is bonding antibonding, this is bonding bonding, antibonding antibonding, bonding. So overall our bond order equals 1 because we have two electrons in bonding orbitals without the antibonding combinations. So you can see that ethane is stable with a single CC bond. We could try other fragments to show um, other different types of bonding, but you can see this is how it interacts. And you can see it's a sigma bond formed through the overlap of these orbitals, which is really similar to what you've seen in the hybridization um, theory, is to think of these sp3 hybridized orbitals that could overlap with these electrons. The same you get a, a single sigma bond for ethane. Um, one thing I'll point out is, in many cases, for fragment orbitals, it's actually easiest just to work with the homo and the lumo. Um, in this case, we just kind of did both. Uh, but usually, you can kind of get away with, with using maybe like the HOMO, the HOMO minus 1, and then the LUMO. And, uh, but it depends on the molecule. But in most cases, uh, you just want to use the frontier orbitals to think about what makes the final product. Because the frontier orbitals are the highest in energy, participate uh, primarily in chemistry. Boop, boop.